Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about styling recommendations. So you can consider this video to be, you know, somewhat of a bonus video because it, it, it doesn't really has a lot to do with React uh, specifically, but it's just more general tips um, for your styling. Because honestly, as a front-end developer, you know, you spend a lot of time um, making sure things look good. You spend a lot of time working with CSS. So that's also why I think it's, uh, it's good to, uh, to, uh, to show you this video. So um, first point, prevent weird styling decisions. Keep it simple. And of course, you know, weird and, and uh, simple are, are subjective terms. But the thing is that sometimes I've seen people doing this, they kind of like create their own you could say utility library, right? So they have like oh, uh, a lot of global stylings, a lot of class names that will be globally applied in your application. And, you know, to some degree, this is perfectly fine, but you can really overdo it. And I think it's always good to, you know, remember uh, and, and keep in your mind, like, you know, when someone else joins your team or your project, is he or she still able to understand what's going on right so you know the more simple you keep it the more like well let's say plain css you do things the easier it will be for people to understand your code and uh you know the more you make abstractions like these utility classes and stuff like that the more difficult it becomes and like if you're the only person working on a project i mean you know perfectly fine you know do your thing but if you know other people have to work with it as well, keep that in mind. Um, I also recommend you to try a CSS reset um, or uh, use something like normalize.css. So yeah, I do think it, it is opinionated, but it's very effective for having consistent styling across different browsers. And if you've watched the uh, web development fundamentals uh, video series, um, then uh, there's, a, there's a video where I actually use a CSS reset, the one from Meyer or Mayer. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think it's a good practice to at least have something like a CSS reset or, or something like normalized CSS. Again, there's a lot of different CSS resets out there you can use. Probably um, Mayer is the, the most, um, most famous one, uh, but it is... Uh, is definitely keep things consistent and much more um, explicit in terms of what you want to do with the styling. Um, the other thing are CSS variables for colors, right? So if you um, often you you have like a design system, and we'll get into that in a minute. And uh, you know you have a sp specific um, you know amount of colors you can choose from. And it's a good thing to use CSS variables for that. So you uh, are consistent with your colors, right? And it's also very nice if you want to, for example, uh, create like a dark mode uh, team in your application, you know, then it's just a matter of switching like the the, the team color. So the, the CSS variable colors and um, then your, you know, your app will just look perfectly fine just by using CSS. So that's, that's something you, uh, you got to keep in mind. Other thing is to keep your CSS selector short. Uh, so for example, try to, you know, keep it like this, right? So do not try to chain or nest selectors in each other, because that is at a certain moment, it becomes pretty difficult to understand where the styles are actually being defined. And using something like this also have has the downside that when you change one of these class names or once you add like a diff some like in between or or remove uh, uh, an element your styling will be gone right it uh, it, it will fail to um, to uh, to apply the correct style so try to keep it short much easier to understand and much more maintainable um, you see that a lot of people are, concerned about like their their CSS performance and if you uh, if you created a react app you can run the npm run build command and then it will show you the um, 
the uh, the chunk of CSS that uh, that comes with your app, and um, you know, like I wouldn't really worry too much about your performance in CSS unless it becomes a problem, right? Um, but I do want to note that your you know the 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 efficiency or the way you can use CSS and and also React you know, as in terms of components efficiently is very tightly coupled to the design system. So, you know, most of the designers, they work with tools like Figma or, or you know, there's also a tool, uh, tools made by Adobe to, um, to create all these designs. And, you know, I think a good design, for example, if you work with Figma, Figma also has this idea of having components and it could, for example, allow a... Um, a, a, a designer to to make a component of for example the profile image and then they can use that component in their screens but as soon as they find that oh we want to make the i don't know we want to make it a, a square loop profile picture they can just change that master component and it will also change in the rest of the application right so i think uh, designers are also being more pushed into that you know way of thinking that you need to uh, try to make components or at least compose your app logically of building blocks. But honestly, like if the design sucks, then your app will probably suck as well. You know, it, it will just be really hard for you as a developer to, um, to, you know, create the components, create like the modular kind of system, uh, including CSS. So that's why if you find yourself having a lot of trouble with inconsistent design, you know, complain about it because it will affect the uh, your application as well. Now, if you're concerned about the performance of your app, uh, what I can recommend you to do is uh, heading over, for example, to something like CSSStats.com. So, for example, here we have, uh, uh, we are analyzing Reddit.com and it will give you an overview of... Uh, of the uh, of the CSS, so you see the CSS is 266 kilobytes. However, when it's gzipped, it's only 67 kilobytes, so that's perfectly fine. Um, I think in most cases you want to keep that gzipped file, uh, you know, below 150, 200 kilobytes. You know, especially if you know if if it would be, for example, one megabyte, you just have you know. Too much CSS going on, you know. It's uh, it's too much. But I think the sweet spot for now uh, is is about 150 to 100 kilobytes. And you can also read a lot more about uh, about your styling right here. So we can sort, of, for example, see uh, how many floats are being used, um, uh, like how many different kinds of colors they are being used. You see, also Reddit is not very consistent with it because yes, they are using in some places some CSS variables, but in other places they just use like the uh, the hex codes and uh, yeah, this can can definitely be improved. Um, you know, also same goes for the background colors. Um, let's see. So here they have typography. They have twenty one unique font sizes. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe they really, uh, really need to use it. But um, yeah, I'm not sure uh, if they really need so much of them. Um, if you see, they have nine font families. Again, they probably will have reasons for that. Um, and then right here, you can also see like lots of other things. Also regarding the specificity and uh, and the row set size. Here you see that they are using a lot of display probably for flexbox which is not necessarily a bad thing um, but this gives you a bit of insight of how your css is built up and um, what you can also do is copy the raw css right here it's quite a lot and then if we go to csslint.net and we paste the uh, code right here then we can lint the uh the CSS we just copied, and we see we got 827 errors and over 2,000 warnings. Now, you got to keep in mind that not every error or warning is uh, very useful, but for example, if you go down, 
you know, there's definitely a lot of things that um, that you can pick up from this. Like it says that they have um, four H1s, five H2s, and four H3s, and so on in the style sheet. I mean, that's something that that you know should not be the case. Uh, it seems like they they're using a lot of floats. Um, they have empty rules, so you know there's like a, the, the the classes are defined, but they are not uh, having any properties. Um, yeah, I mean they use important right here, which is you know sometimes you might really need it, but uh, <laughs> it's definitely something you you generally speaking want to avoid. Uh, now you can see they have a lot of uh, a lot of things right here you can uh, you can check out. So that's something I can recommend if you uh, if you want to uh, maybe clean up your uh, CSS uh, if you like. Um, the thing is that if the maintainability of your CSS or or the size becomes a problem, you know, discuss it with your team. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to uh, to to face those problems and, and to uh, to uh, to fix it. But you know, I wouldn't worry too much about it uh, upfront, especially if your app. I mean, we just talked about Reddit. You know, that's a that's a pretty large application uh, with a lot of different kind of pages, and 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 I think most of the applications uh, uh, you will be building are not that big as Reddit, but you never know, of course. So uh, yeah, that was it pretty much for this video. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.